Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Zweb Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. This is the second part of my tutorial on creating a loading service in Angular with RxJS and Material. In this video, we'll cover two improvements to our loading spinner. The first one will be disabling the background and adding a blur to our content while the loader is shown. This was requested by one of the comments on my previous video, so I thought this would be a good improvement from a UX point of view. The second one is a more serious improvement in how the HTTP interceptor works and is meant to fix a bug which appears when you have multiple network calls at the same time. We'll go over that in a few minutes. But first, let's get started. To disable the background while the loader is in progress, we'll introduce an overlay first. Let's create a div in our app and give it a class name of overlay. We'll add some styling in a bit, but before that, let's add a parent ng container and move both the spinner and the div inside of it. Then we'll shift the ngf condition to the ng container itself. The benefit of using an ng container here is that this won't be rendered in the final HTML, so we won't have any unnecessary divs in our HTML. Let's add the styling for the overlay now. We'll go in our SAS file and we'll add a class here for the overlay, dot overlay. And the overlay will have position absolute because we need to cover the whole screen. And to do that, we'll have the top as zero, we'll have the left as zero, and the right and the bottom as zero as well. Next, we'll make the Z index as two because we need to keep it above the content and we'll make sure that the spinner Z index is three because we need to keep it above the overlay. Now let's test this all out. So when we show the loader now, we'll see we can't click on the content of our app because the overlay is on top of it. Let's add a blur on the overlay so that the user knows the content below it is disabled. For that, we'll use the backdrop filter with a blur of two pixels. Great. We now have a good looking blur effect telling the user the loader is in progress. So that's it for the blurred background effect. Whether you want to keep it or not is your own personal preference. It is good for the overall UX for your app, but make sure all error conditions are handled in this case, because otherwise the user would be effectively locked out of your app if the loader is not stopped. Now let's move on to the next improvement. For that, we first need to see what the problem is with the current implementation. So the current setup works well when we have one network request happening at one time. But what if we have multiple API requests happening in parallel as can happen in complex web apps nowadays? Let us test this out with our loader here and see if it works correctly. So we'll add a button which will fetch multiple data at once. And it will have the fetch multiple data as its handler. And then we'll copy some code in which I've already prepared. So here we are making two sets of API calls. One is the same as before getting my user details from GitHub. The second one would be two calls, one after the other. One would be my user detail, and the second would be getting all of the users list from GitHub. So the two sets of calls should take longer than the single one, and our loader should only stop when both have ended. We'll log the outputs of both in the console to test as well. Let's also open our dev tools here to check when the data returns. The API calls would be a bit too fast for us, so we are going to disable the cache and we're going to enable some throttling. Okay, uh, now let's test this. So when we click on fetch multiple data now, we get the loader as before, but then the loader disappears when the first response comes back. Then we get our second response, but the loader has already stopped till then. This is called a race condition in the software world, which means when multiple operations are happening simultaneously, the outcome is a bit different depending on the order of the operations. In this case, whichever API returns before will stop the loader and give an impression to the user that nothing is loading anymore. One way to deal with this is by adding a counter of the request currently in process and only stopping the loader when all the network requests have completed. So let's do that now and then we'll test again. We'll go in our network interceptor and create two variables. The first one would be total requests 
and the second one would be completed requests. Both will be initially zero. Next, when we show our loader, we'll increment our total requests by one. And whenever any request completes or returns, we are going to increment our completed requests. Then we'll check whether our completed requests are equal to the total requests or not. If they are, then we can safely say that all requests have completed and then we can hide our loader. Of course, we also need to reset the counters so they can be used next time. Great. Let's test this out now. We'll open our dev tools again and then click fetch multiple data. Now the loader will keep on loading till the last of the API call resolving our issue with multiple calls. If you want to examine this a bit more closely, we can also add some logging to the interceptor, which shows the total and completed requests. This dot completed requests and the total requests. And let's test it out again. Now you will see the exact counter and how it increases as the network calls progress. We get three out of three at the end. Great. So that's it for now. We have improved upon our original loading service in Angular and made it more robust to handle any number of API calls at the same time. I hope you found this useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe as I come up with more useful stuff for you guys. Thanks for watching.